Well, good morning, Broadway. I've been thinking some this week about security and how in the midst of this global pandemic, so much of our security has been threatened. Our health, our financial security, our own just personal safety and protection. But yet it's also gotten me thinking about our own insecurity and security as people and the way that that seems to be threatened as well. When so much of our normal life has been taken away, where is it that we find our security? It got me thinking about one of my favorite books from one of my favorite authors, a guy named Donald Miller, who wrote a book called Searching for God Knows What. And he recounts the first time that he really recognized that our security doesn't come from ourselves. It actually comes from God, that that's how we were created. In fact, he tells about a time he was in a class studying the book of Genesis and reading through the first three books, or chapters rather, of Genesis. He discovered these, uh, this reality. In fact, he describes it this way. He said, I realized man was wired, so he gets his glory, his security, his understanding of value, his feeling of purpose, his feeling of rightness with his maker, his security for eternity. He gets that glory from God. And this relationship is so strong and God's love is so pure that Adam and Eve felt no insecurity at all, so much so that they walked around naked and didn't even realize they were naked. But when that relationship was broken, they knew it instantly. All of their glory, the glory that came from God, it was gone. You know, it wouldn't be unlike being in love and having somebody love you, and then all of a sudden that person is gone. Or like being a kid lost in the store. All of the insecurity rises the instant you realize you are alone. No insecurity was felt when the person who loved you was around. But in his absence, it instantly comes to the surface. In this way, Adam and Eve were naked and weren't ashamed when God was around. But the second the relationship was broken, they realized it and were ashamed. You know, so much of our life these days is about proving our worth and our value and recognizing that our security doesn't come from ourselves. And instead of seeking it from God, we seek it from others around us and Actually, that kind of life makes us pretty miserable. You know, a little bit later in Donald's book, he talks about an experience he had in uh, the fifth grade. He said his teacher, Mrs. Wunsch, gave them an exercise. She divided them up into all groups of four or five students, and then she gave them this exercise. She said, there's a lifeboat that's adrift at sea, and in the lifeboat are five people, a male lawyer, a female doctor, a stay-at-home mom, a garbage man, and a crippled child. And in order for them to be saved, one of them is going to have to be thrown overboard. Otherwise, all will be lost. So your job, students, is to figure out which person gets thrown out of the lifeboat. Donald said, uh, looking back on that exercise, he said, I'm surprised at how quickly we came up with an answer. Uh, it's probably the lawyer. It's always the lawyer. But he said, uh, we easily discovered who it was who had the least value in the boat, and we tossed him overboard. Uh, in fact, that's kind of a microcosm for our life. He said, most of our life is spent trying to convince people why we shouldn't be thrown out of the lifeboat. In fact, that certainly was my experience, not only in middle school and in high school, uh, even into college. And I wish I could say it's, it's finally ended, but I've noticed how that same struggle, I see it and uh, feels familiar even as an adult. And it's so dangerous as kids, it feels like our very lives are at stake, trying to prove our worth and our value to uh, the people around us. That still is true, isn't it, for many of us today, that we seek our worth and our value not from the one who created us, who loves us, who calls us his beloved, and who has blessed us with his Holy Spirit, his presence with us, but instead we determine our value based on what other people think of us or say about us or, or what we can contribute uh, through our gifts, our talents, or lack thereof. So it got me thinking, what, what might our church look like if we really began to find our identity, our worth, our security in Christ as we celebrate the empty tomb this week and, and in the coming year? As we think about what it means to be God's people, to be loved, that Jesus loved us so much that he gave his own life for us. And what if we allowed that to be where we find our security and our safety? You know, that was the life that Jesus lived. He lived as if the lifeboat theory didn't exist. In fact, he lived as if we shouldn't 
try to win at the lifeboat theory game. Uh, not just for failure's sake, but because there really wasn't anything to win. In fact, he operated on totally different principles. He said, if someone asks you for your shirt, give them your coat as well. If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn to them the other cheek. If someone takes you and asks you to go a mile, go that second mile. You see, Jesus lived that way. He didn't live based on the lifeboat theory, that he had to prove his worth or his value to his followers or to anyone. Instead, he knew his value came from his heavenly Father. And so he lived a different way. He lived in a different kingdom, and he calls his his followers, his disciples, to live that same way. And you know, church, they did. And it changed the world. And so I want us to be thinking about, as we head into this weekend, as we begin to think together for these next three Sundays about Mission Sunday, about people who are living on mission, uh, I want us to be thinking about what it means to be people who find our security and our safety in God and therefore are free to share the good news, the hope that we have in Christ. I love you, church. Looking forward to being with you uh, again soon. But between that day and this, uh, may we be God's people fully.